Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and welcome to your 10th Pug tutorial. So in this one I want to talk about mix-ins. And mix-ins are basically just reusable blocks of Pug code and they behave like functions. You can actually call these mix-ins throughout your Pug project and even pass in um, data as arguments. So dynamic data from your database or whatever, you can pass it in as arguments and then the mix-in will actually render the HTML with those arguments. So um, they behave very similar to functions. So let's see how this thing actually works. We're going to use an example of a typical website comment. So a comment has things such as an author, a date, and also the actual comment text itself. And we're going to use a mixin to actually render a comment. So on a post or a video, there might be heaps of comments, just say five to 100 comments, and you can use a mixin to, um, to produce the same HTML structure for all those comments, but have different data. So let's first start by actually designing the comment HTML first. So inside the body, let's create a new wrapper for a comment. So let's make a div with a class of comment just like that. This div has three child elements. The first one being the comment date. Uh, and let's just say the date was, for example, uh, the 2nd of April. Okay. And we can have one for the actual author. So dot author. So a class of author. Give it um, value of decode me for example and also one more for the text this will be the actual comment itself uh, for example hey mate nice tutorials okay so now if I was to save this inside the HTML directory we have a new index HTML file and the output looks like this if I was to go in the browser and refresh we get that right there all right so that is basically the structure of the comment designed in HTML Let's just add some simple styles to make it look better. All right, let's make a new style tag up here in the head and create a new style, um, a style set for the comment class. Give it a font family of sans serif, a line height of 1.5. Let's give um, some padding, about 10 pixels. Okay, and a border of one pixel, solid and dark gray and also a width of 250 pixels, all right? Now for the actual date, let's make this a bit smaller. So we'll say um, dot .date, a class of date. Let's give it a font size of 85%, all right? For the author, let's give a font size of a bit larger, something like 110%, and a font weight of bold. And also for the actual text itself, let's just say font size 100%, and that'll be the default value anyway, but that's fine. If I was to save this and refresh the browser, this time we get that right there. So we have the comment structure in HTML and also some styles. I'll just add for the date a text align of right to get that to the right side. Save this, refresh, and we get that right there. Perfect, so now we have the actual structure we can now move this into a mixin, all right? And that'll let us actually reuse this same structure for whatever values we want later on, okay? So, on the top of this pug file, let's declare a mixin. We can do this by using the mixin keyword. So we'll say mixin, followed by a space, and then the, um, the name of the mixin itself. In this case here, let's call our mixin comments okay now as i said this mixin can contain or accept arguments extra data we can put these arguments inside a brace let's accept one argument that'll be comment data so now we can reference this comment data argument as a typical javascript object within the actual mixin itself so now after an indent, inside here, this mixin, we can put whatever pug code we want. All right, so for example, let's render first the comment wrapper. So we'll say 
dot comment. So a div with a class of comment. Okay. Now down here, we can start to um, render some dynamic values from this comment data argument. So inside here, let's copy um, all this stuff right here. So we'll copy this, paste it inside there, and fix that up. So now for these values, right, we can say this instead. We we'll put an equals to get some buffered output, and we can say comment data dot date. All right, down here, the same thing. Comment data dot author. Same thing for the bottom one. Equals and then comment data dot text. Okay, so now the mixing is complete. We have this reusable structure with some dynamic data coming from the argument. Okay, so now if I was to save this and go down here, all right, and I'm going to replace all of this stuff right here with a mixing call. But first, let's just declare a JavaScript object to actually be the comment data. So down here, let's put a dash right here and say, make a new constant and call this one C equal to a JavaScript object. Let's give it some values. We need date, author, and text. So down here, let's start with date. The date, once again, we can say it was the 2nd of April, so 02, so 4 2018. Let's give it um, the, uh, the author property of decode and the text. Let's just say the same thing. Hey, mate, great tutorials. Okay, boom. So now, um, if I was to go down here, we can now call this mixin. And you call a mixin by putting the plus, all right? followed by the mixin name. In our case, it'll be comment. So plus and then comment, that right there. Now we can pass in the data. In this case here, it'll be C. C is gonna be the JavaScript object to pass into this comment. It's gonna be rendered up here. So now, if I was to save this and refresh the browser, this time around, we get the same thing with a replaced comment data. Okay, so we can see how it's actually working. If I was to go down here and make a new uh, comment object, we'll copy that right there, paste it inside there. Let's change the date to 2020 and we'll make it something like this uh, 2nd of July. The author will be, I don't know, Bruce. All right, and the text can be, um, that was funny. Save this and then actually let's just um, call the actual mixin again. So plus comment, pass in C. Ooh, let's just make this C1. All right, C1, that was a constant. So now if I was to save this, refresh the browser, boom, we get two comments while only writing the um, HTML what. So that's the advantage of using mixins. Now just keep in mind that these mixins, as I said, can actually contain any form of um, you know, pug features. So, for example, let's actually put an if statement within this mixin. Let's say that some comments can be posted by an admin user, and in that case, we want something like a message on top here that says this was posted by an admin. So, let's just go back inside the code here and create an if statement inside this comment. Okay, we can say if comment data dot posted by admin. So if it was posted by an admin, we want to render a new i italic um, or let's use an em. So an so an, an em tag to produce italic text and give it the um, the text of posted by admin. Okay. So now if this comment was posted by an admin, render that right there. So now within this code down here. Let's say that the first comment has the posted by admin property with a value of true. Okay, so now if I was to save this one and refresh the browser, we get posted by admin within that comment there because it has the actual um, property right there. So you can see that um, the mixin supports all the types of pug features, not just rendering HTML by itself. All right, and that is how you can use mixins in pug. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.